All right, welcome to the Manny and Abby show. As you know, here we're going to be covering fitness, kids, business, military, and also pertaining to at risk youth. I was at, at at risk youth myself. I have this um, little meaning here that was posted in 2018. What What is a youth at risk? What is that? Right. And I was also a mentor, counselor and case manager for youth that were on probation, youth at risk. I actually worked in that field being a youth at risk myself. I grew up very rough, very rough. And and everything that that this meaning says, it says youth at risk is a general term for a range of circumstances that place young people at greater vulnerability for problem behaviors such as substance abuse, right? Substance abuse. I dealt with alcohol and and marijuana. Um, Cocaine, not really. I tasted it. That was it. That's as far. Oh, actually, you know what? I smoked a joint, a weed joint that was laced with cocaine that we actually found out about later on why were we acting crazy on my youth because somebody had laced a weed joint with cocaine it is it was horrible anyways substance abuse okay school failure was i failing in school i was i was um i had very bad temper i had a very bad temper I lost my cool very easily. I was always fighting in school, you know, involving myself with gangs and stuff like that. I actually, my parents, my father moved us to L.A. Right now, we we live in a small little city, but we actually moved to L.A., South Central L.A., Compton and stuff like that in the early 90s. And it was horrible how the gangs infiltrated and influenced our lives as kids. I have a big family and I was around eight years old during that time. So uh, schools, I was, I think I ended up going in through around 20 different schools over there because I was always getting transferred over to other schools. But anyways, yeah, school failure. So substance abuse, check. School failure, check. Juvenile delinquency, check. I used to steal a lot. I used to steal a lot. And what else? Oh, man. Um, Many, many other delinquencies, especially theft. Theft was big during high school. Man, along with mental health disorders. Was there a mental health disorder? I think so, because I was going based on my own understanding. Uh, my parents, they were just really hard working, especially my father. My father was the only breadwinner in the household, and my mother took care of us. Uh, she was a housewife, and it was eight of us to, uh, to a certain point to where my older, older sisters ended up helping, taking care of the smaller uh, siblings, right? So was there a mental health disorder? Yes. Yes. It was a dog-eat-dog world. <laughs> um, it was a survival mode, you know, a fight or flight type of deal. So, yeah. Such, such as depression and anxiety. Yeah, there was a lot of depression. There was a lot of anxiety. And because of that, because I was going based on my own understanding, I thought that, you know, Whatever I saw on the streets was life. Like, you're supposed to uh, be tough. You, well, you, yeah, you're supposed to be tough, but in a good way, right? You, were, you weren't supposed to be bullying others. You, you weren't supposed to be disrespecting others, hurting others because they just looked at you wrong type of deal. So now that I'm much older, I kind of see things differently. And what would I do? What would I do now? in order for that whole mentality or that whole situation can change for somebody how can i help out how what advice would i give right now 
in order to handle somebody that's at risk, right? And one thing that I will say is it's actually pretty hard. It's actually pretty hard to to tackle this situation because it comes down to the parents. It comes down to the parents, not to the youth per se, not not strictly just towards the youth. It's got to be the parents. But then as you get older in that youth at risk environment, in, in that environment as a youth, then it becomes harder for the parents to have you change or to for anybody to help you change so the best thing is to catch it early catch it early so let's teach our young parents or anybody that's planning to be a parent to be a that that they they will have the opportunity to be able to be there for the for the kids educate and be aware of that whole risky situation so one thing that is causing a lot of addiction right now with the whole youth and you see it everywhere is like opioids right opioids like fentanyl and stuff like that there's a lot of them that are around but right now there's uh, the fentanyl and here's a video that can kind of give us a little bit of understanding of how opioids work in order to understand how opioids work it's important to know how your body feels pain the process begins when something harmful happens to your body. Information about this harm is converted to a nerve signal. The signal passes along nerves to your spinal cord and brain. In your brain, the signal is perceived as pain. Opioid drugs affect how you feel pain. There it is right there. So it, they stop the whole pain. If there's no pain, there's no learning. A lot of times we, we learn from pain. We scrape our knee. We get that pain. We take care of ourselves. We place our fingers in fire. We get a little bit burned. We move it right away because of the pain. So, But when you don't have that receptor, then there's no learning lesson. They attach to structures called opioid receptors. These receptors are found on cells in your brain, spinal cord, and other areas of your body. Opioids act on these receptors to make you feel less pain. These drugs also have different effects in other areas. For example, opioids act on the reward pathway in your brain. This causes a release of a chemical called dopamine that results in a happy feeling or high. There it is right there. So it also triggers dopamine, endorphin, all that is that feel good sensation liquid dopamine in your brain so that's why the, these kids are doing the fentanyl uh if now let's go to this video over here we're on this video right here killer high this was just posted three months ago talking about fentanyl and stuff like that opioids and check this out plain and simple like you know there's, there's no secret sauce or uh it's not a science drug dealing is it's all about money uh, and the amount of profit to be made off fentanyl is is enormous you know, for a transnational drug cartel you know these pills will maybe cost them maybe pennies on the dollar 50 cents to make right uh, here uh, you know these pills are going for anywhere between 25 to 30 dollars a pill for one pill so as you can see that the profit margins are are huge it takes a very small amount for it to have the effect that it would similar ha have similarly to another opiate let's say you get kilo of pure fentanyl, which is rare, but you can then flip that and make, you know, let's say at least a hundred times more of that, you know, use it as a cutting agent for other narcotics. If someone takes a, what would be considered to be a fatal dose of fentanyl, how long would they have? All right. So right here, there's, here's a good question. If they take too much of this stuff, all right, too much of the uh, fentanyl, how long will they have to live if they take too much? 10 minutes, 15. 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. This stuff are killing kids. And again, because they want that feel good sensation, depression, anxiety, right? We read it earlier. 
depression, anxiety, anger, and all that. They don't want to feel that, so they take fentanyl. Eight minutes. If that. That's it. Since the start of 2020, 69 people have died of fentanyl-related overdoses in just in Fresno County. 69. Thirty-eight of them were under the age of thirty. Youth. The youngest was sixty years old. Cases. Is there a specific age group for this stuff? Yeah, eighteen to thirty-five. There you have it. So eighteen to thirty-five is the age range uh, where you know the youth or even young guys, girls are overdosing over these opioids. So. There you have it, you know, just drugs, drugs, that depression, anxiety that we read in the, in the beginning. We need, as parents, we need to be there for the kids. And that's what will be my advice is be there because when I was growing up, my father and mother, they weren't really there. They provided, you know, we had something to eat. We had a roof over our head and we had clothing on our back. But after that, 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 that was it. That was it. So let me know what you guys think about these videos. I'll make more of these Manny's Corner videos by you liking it. I'll make more of the ones you guys like. You guys take care, be safe, mind first, the body will follow, and just strive. Bye-bye.